I'm like, want to be able to see everybody's face, but there's too many people to show on my screen. Um, that's a good problem to have. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here um, for the conclusion of the second year of the Accelerate Her Incubator program. This is a program in partnership between Texas Women's University Center for Women Entrepreneurs and Stoke, which is Denton's co-working space. I am Heather Gregory. I'm the owner of Hickory and Rail Ventures, which is the business that has a public-private partnership with the Economic Development Department of the City of Denton to operate Stoke. So these three partners are really integral um, to accelerate her. And um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you to the City of Denton and especially to TWU and to um, your, Tracy, you and your team um, for all that you do to make this partnership happen. I see so many familiar faces in the audience and it fills me with joy to see you here. And for those of you that I haven't met yet, welcome, it's so nice to see you. I know that we have people joining us from across the Metroplex and across the country and we're really happy that you could join us today. Um, it has been such a privilege and honor to work with and learn from this group of interesting, diverse, intelligent, hardworking women in this incubator. For the last five months, we've had two meetings each week, one cohort call where we as a, as a cohort um, and program administrators asked each other for help. We shared our wins, um, we gave updates and we just generally provided support to each other. We also had a weekly workshop led by experts in marketing, branding, business development, funding, finance, leadership, and more. And there was also a small group of dedicated mentors that volunteered their time to provide advice and guidance and valuable feedback to the founders as they developed and refined their business plans and pitches. Many of you in the audience are among those that gave your time to the program and these women, and I really want to extend my sincerest gratitude to each of you for your contributions of time and expertise. Tonight is the culmination of five months of hard work and a lot of Zoom calls. And I couldn't be more proud of the women that you're gonna hear from tonight. The business ideas that you will hear being pitched are diverse in their business models and area of focus. And each entrepreneur has a different ask of how you, the audience, can help support them as their business grows. There won't be a winner. Um, this is not a pitch competition. This is rather an opportunity for these women to share with you their businesses, to ask for your support, and to really celebrate the completion of the program and their hard work. Um, this, uh, on this very same day last year, last year it was on a Thursday, this year it's on a Friday, but the very same date, um, we held our pitch event for our first ever cohort. This is the second cohort that we're celebrating tonight. Um, and after that first cohort wrapped, we were able to um, work with a local agency, Square 205, to create a video with a few members of that cohort. We wanted to be able to capture firsthand testimonials and some of the positive impacts that this program had for these female founders. And so it's a short video, it's just two minutes, um, but I'm going to share my screen and we'll just watch it together. One of my goals in the Accelerator program was gaining an understanding of business models and finding a business model that would work for my business. And the program was really wonderful in sort of opening my eyes to what various different business models could be. With the Accelerator program, one of the goals I wanted to have as a business owner coming out of the program was to build a better community and get to know my community better. And I feel like with the Accelerator program, I didn't just gain a community, I gained a family. The experience of looking at the women who were in the cohort and finding, you know, the like-minded 
uh, people that yeah. led to like the partnership that we did with the yeah. online course, yeah. right? So, so we developed an online social media course together where I took my skills as a social media guru and her skills as a content course creator. And we created this really awesome course to help mm -hmm. small business owners make your social media work for you. Mm -hmm. I came into the Accelerate Her program with two very specific goals. One was to find my technical co-founder because I'm launching a tech-based business without having a tech background. So that was essential. And then also it was to really tighten up my marketing plan, both short-term and long-term, because that's a space where it's so critical to the business. And I just didn't feel like I had a good hold on it. And by the end of the Accelerator program, I had done both of those things. I'm Tracy Irby, Director at TWU Center for Women Entrepreneurs. When we were approached by Heather at Stoke Denton about starting an incubator program, we were so excited because we knew this could be a great opportunity for entrepreneurs wanting to start a business and to help them grow. Organize your independent business this year using HoneyBook. Okay, there we go. I practiced doing the video, but not ending it. <laughs> um, so anyway, as you can see, it's just a great program and we're so excited to be partners with Texas Women's University um, and to be able to help these female founders. Up next, we're gonna hear from my fellow Accelerate Her program manager, Tracy Irby, the director of the Center for Women Entrepreneurs at TWU. Tracy has a passion for entrepreneurship. She joined the Center for Women Entrepreneurs in their first, as their first business advisor after working for six years as a small business advisor for the North Texas Small Business Development Center. And she has been a serial entrepreneur for over 25 years and loves bringing her firsthand experience to new and established entrepreneurs. She has an MBA and BBA in marketing from Texas A&M University of Commerce. She is a graduate, a graduate from the OU Economic Development Institute and holds an Economic Development Finance Certificate from the National Development Council. So Tracy is going to speak um, for a few moments to us about what her, their center does. So take it away, Tracy. Great to be here. I'm so excited to see everyone tonight. Uh, it's great to see some from uh, last year's cohort here, uh, family members and others uh, to see this tonight. So, this evening. So anyway, I, first I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges women entrepreneurs have, a little a bit about TWU, Center for Women Entrepreneurs, and how we address some of those, and how all of you can support women entrepreneurs. So there's so many different challenges faced by women entrepreneurs. And one of the major ones, of course, uh, we hear all the time is access to funding. Another is isolation. So many of them start working from home. They don't have uh, other people to throw ideas off of, et cetera. That's what's so great about a cohort like this. They get the opportunity to talk with other entrepreneurs that are like themselves and are facing the same struggles or, or, you, or issues. Sorry, I saw something on my screen. And then education. A lot of them, when they start, they really don't know that much about business or they don't know what they don't know. And as an entrepreneur, I know I see Heather nodding there. There's so much we learn as, as we go along, problems we never thought we'd have, uh, issues that pop up and things that we really need to know. And we always ask uh, in the cohort what people want to hear about, but sometimes we have to add things, not that you want to hear about, but that you need to hear about as a woman business owner. Uh, recent studies have shown that women-owned businesses make 34% less in their first year than male-owned businesses. Aspiring entrepreneurs are less likely to receive external financing, and when they do, it's often less than what men make. 
Women-led businesses see an average revenue of 50,000 in the first year and men typically see over 75. So we really want to help and encourage and give women the tools that they need to start overcoming some of these, some of these factors that kind of slow them down. So we are the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. We were funded in 2015 by the state legislature just to help promote women entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Texas. They thought what better place to put it than at Texas Women's University. Uh, we love being here. A lot of times people think though they have to be affiliated with the university to take care of our programs, but we are open to uh, the whole state of Texas. So we help women in many different ways. We do, a we do help with funding. We have several different grant programs. And in this year, we will, with one we have coming up, we will be, have given away over $2 million in grants to women-owned businesses in Texas. Uh, we have different programs. Uh, some are Start Her program, we give 5,000. Uh, we have a veteran grant program. That one runs from one to 10,000. A lot of people don't realize that someone can kick off a business with very low, low money. And there are those that just, just go for the thousand dollars in there. Our biggest grant today was the Assist Her grant that we gave during COVID. We were able to um, announced that in March of 2020, and we gave $110,000 grants, a million dollars to women-owned businesses in Texas. We also help with business development. We have helped over 500 women with small business advising here at the center. Uh, we have this great partnership with Stoke Denton, uh, the accelerator program. We're so happy to have that and giving women the education and training they need to help make their businesses viable and grow. Uh, we also have done a leadership forum for women entrepreneurs. We have partnerships with many other um, companies outside for referral sources and resources for the entrepreneurs that we see. We also offer a lot of training. Uh, we do virtual workshops to support women. We have our Women Rise, which is the second Tuesday of every month. We have a small business training course with our Start Her grant that anybody's anybody can attend. And those go through some of the very basics of startup, including insurance, business plans, legal issues, everything that can affect uh, uh, a small business. We do quarterly workshops and we started last year uh, actually, with one from the last cohort, a Saturday, uh, Saturday half, half day workshop, because so many women had requested that they wanted classes or coursework on Saturday. Uh, Donna Lisa Stinyard is on, on the call as well. She is our program director, and she does a great job <laughs> getting everything coordinated for these events. So as we look at this, we will continue to work to help women however we can to be successful in small business. But what can you do? What can you as families and friends and everyone else do out there do to really help promote women businesses? Well, a great start, of course, is to buy from women-owned businesses or go and utilize their services. Take advantage of that all that you can. Engage and promote them on social media post hashtags or some ask other women to do just really start creating that awareness that the businesses are woman owned and that they would really appreciate your support. You can refer your friends, neighbors, families to their businesses, uh, go online, give them, give their business reviews. That is so helpful and helps them, uh, move up and search, uh, search, helps to in search engine optimization. Uh, if you can invest in them, if they're, you know, if you see some great ones on here tonight, 
there are some that are looking for funding, but you can also support them by going to their websites, uh, again, seeing what they do, share their information, follow them on social media, uh, do whatever you can to help them get the exposure to really grow and expand their business. So I don't want to keep us much longer because I'm so excited to hear everybody speak tonight. Uh, I know they'll do a great job and everybody here will enjoy just the diverse uh, group of women in their businesses and what they have to offer. Heather? Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, I'm going to, here we go. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is um, this afternoon, each entrepreneur will have about five minutes to give their pitch. Um, and then there will be five minutes of Q&A after. Um, we are going to um, keep it moving pretty quickly to make sure that we run on time. Um, so if you don't have the opportunity to, um, if you don't have the chance to ask your question during the five minute Q&A, don't worry. You can save your question because each entrepreneur will be doing breakout rooms it, at, after, after everybody pitches and has their five minutes of Q&A, each entrepreneur will host their own, um, their own breakout room. And so you can go and dive deeper um, with an entrepreneur or a couple of entrepreneurs, ask questions, um, get a little bit more information. So we encourage you to do that. Um, um, Sorry, we had a little, there's a little technical, but we've, we're, we're getting it. Um, so we'll do the five minutes pitch, five minutes of questions, and then the breakout rooms after the fact. Um, during the pitch, the speaker will be highlighted. They'll be sharing their screen after, after they pitch. You know, I know we're all kind of experts at Zoom at this point, but we just really want to make sure that it's really engaging. So I encourage you, um, when after the 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 woman uh, has pitched, uh, go to your controls in the top right hand corner. It says view, and just make sure it's on gallery view. You'll be able to see everybody. Where you know, if you have a question, you can either wave your hand um, or you can actually um, add a reaction. That's a hand wave. So we will we'll be able to see your question and call on you. Of course, you can also add that into the chat. Um, and then lastly, after this event wraps here on Zoom, we're going to be meeting up at Armadillo Ale Works, um, which is a local business here in Denton. Um, and we'd love for all of you to come and join us at a happy hour and we can continue um, connecting uh, then. So I'm really excited um, to get started with the pitches. Um, and so the first pitch that we have is from Carrie Meyer Cord Westerman and Gina Dunlap, who are co founders of Thistle Creative Reuse. Um, so we'll just make sure that the controls are set. Um, and uh, I can see you guys, and you can share your screen and get started whenever you're ready. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Okay. I got it. Okay. Well, before we start, uh, I just quickly wanted to express our gratitude to Stoke and to TWUCWE for all of your hard work, specifically Heather, Lossamy, Tracy, and Donna Lisa. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for everything that you bring to this community. We are truly lucky to have you all here. Uh, and so with that, we'll jump right in. Um, I assume you all can see my slides okay, so I'll just keep going. Okay. Uh, like Heather mentioned, we are the co-founders of Thistle Creative Reuse. My name is Carrie, and I've worked in creative reuse for seven years. And prior to starting Thistle, I was the COO for a national network of nonprofit creative reuse centers. And I feel right at home in this work. So I was raised by many generations of not just artists, but starving artists. 
And I grew up swimming in creeks and climbing trees. So environmental conservation is very dear to my heart. And my name is Gina. I've worked in creative reuse for four years and was drawn to working in creative reuse after uh, shopping at my local center allowed me to start my own small craft business. Um, and I've just been a thrifty crafter my whole life as well. So, The Soul Creative Reuse helps people get creative sustainably. We sell pre-loved, gently used art, craft, and unique creative materials in an online and brick and mortar marketplace. Simply put, we're a niche thrift store for arts and crafts. We get the materials we sell through donations from the community which we are then able to sell for 30 to 50% of what those items cost retail. The majority of the donations that we receive are from individuals in the community. We are for profit and our mission and our community are central in guiding what we do. Each month we give materials to community groups and nonprofits through our give back program. The take make waste approach is a thing of the past. There is enough stuff in the world. Reuse is the future. Reuse businesses like Thistle participate in the circular economy. We localize the circular economy through the process of donation and resale. Have to do some physical switching, sorry y'all. <laughs> Climate change is here. We can see its effects all around us. It's estimated that over 60% of global greenhouse gas emissions are from the production and use of household items. And then if we look specifically at arts and crafts materials, like the ones on this slide that many of you likely recognize, we see that every single one of them required fossil fuels to produce, package, and ship. And even though we need change at the highest levels of leadership, there are changes that we can all make to our consumption habits that will make a huge impact on environmental health. According to the EPA, reuse is one of the most effective ways to save natural resources and protect the environment. Think about that. One of the most effective solutions is not creating some new green product, it's using what we already have. This means that you, that anyone, can make an impact by simply choosing reuse. Because even though we're in a climate crisis, life goes on, right? We still need crayons for our kids and we need materials to make with because humans are innately creative. This whole creative reuse is the joyful solution to the dire problem of overconsumption. Since opening in January of last year, our community members have donated over 16,000 pounds of usable materials. They've chosen reuse first by placing over 6,000 orders with us, which has allowed us to create green collar jobs. We've grown from a team of three to a team of seven. And finally, in one year, we've outgrown our small space. We are incredibly excited to announce that as of last week, and as a result of connections made in Accelerate Her, we found a small warehouse space to sublease. This extra space means that we can increase the amount of donations we accept and increase the amount of materials we sell both in our brick and mortar and our online shops. All of this means more opportunity for you to choose reuse first. We are launching a Kickstarter campaign to outfit this new warehouse. Our all or nothing goal is $2,000 to pay for things like shelving, tables, and photography lighting. What our community has helped us achieve in one year is a drop in the bucket. Those 16,000 pounds that I mentioned earlier, that was us showing restraint and turning people away. 
With a well set up warehouse space, together we can make an even bigger impact. We can divert more materials from the waste stream and get those materials into creative hands. Backing our project means that you're saying yes to green collar jobs, environmental health, and accessible creativity. The supply is there, the demand is there, and the environmental need is there. If you're able, please consider contributing to our Kickstarter campaign. The QR code on this slide will get you to that campaign, or it will allow you to shop with Thistle, or to donate materials, or to just stay in touch. Uh, thank you for your time, and we look forward to your questions. Um, that's so thrilling. I'm so excited. Um, so who has questions for Carrie and Gina? I had a quick question. I don't know if yeah. we need to raise our hands. Um, but um, what I was curious about is how you knew it was the right time to grow your, your team. How, how did you know it was time to hire? Um, yeah, uh, good question. Um, we just had way more demand. Like we couldn't, we couldn't possibly keep up. It, Gina and I were just, we were drowning. <laughs> so we started hiring people. Um, someone asked where the warehouse is going to be located. Um, I am a super big fan of bunch bikes and it's going to be in the corner of bunch bikes, which is, um, over west of Razor Ranch. And so I'm really excited about that too. Really, really shameless plug here. Aaron Powell, the CEO of Bunch Bikes, is here in the call. He's been a mentor in the program. So um, again, this is just like really tangible, like outcome from the program and the community lift, right? Like Aaron really invested time in these people and Carrie and Gina um, like took them up on that opportunity. So it's really thrilling. Any other questions for these ladies? I have a question. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Lily Whittington, and um, I would love to know if there is some sort of like textile recycling program potentially that is like partnership with Thistle, or is that, you know, if we have old textiles that we don't use anymore, would we be able to bring them to you for recycling? Great question. Um, yeah, and so we, we take fabric. So as long as it's not made into clothes or anything like that, yes, we take unused fabric. And the best, the best thing to do with it is to reuse it. Yeah, because uh, textile recycling is toxic and tricky. But yeah, I would definitely take it. Great question, thanks. So then there's another question in the chat. Is there any value in relationship with a nonprofit to provide tax advantage contributions to possibly higher quality stuff? Um, I have worked uh, for a nonprofit creative reuse center and I don't think that it, it uh, in my personal experience, it didn't make any difference about the quality of items that we received then or now. But I don't know, yeah. <laughs> There's any last questions? Yeah, <laughs> any last questions? You can drop them in the chat or you can speak up or otherwise we're going to move on to our next pitch. Awesome. Heather, we did have one. Christine asked if they took jeans. We, uh, we do not take um, like whole pairs of jeans if they were cut into strips or something like if someone was going to quilt with them, yes, we would take those strips, but we can't take the whole, uh, like a regular pair of pants. Great. Excellent job, Carrie and Gina. Um, really excited for y'all and, and what's to come with Thistle. So, um, great job. Um, up next, we have pitching um, 
Radha Patel, who is the founder of the Anti Network. Perfect. Just dive in. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Radha. Awesome. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Radha Patel, and I'm the founder of the Anti Network, a family focused dating app that promotes collaborative matchmaking in the South Asian community because, after all, Auntie knows best. Immigrant parents have a vested interest in their loved ones finding a qualified matrimonial prospect. They identify with certain religious or cultural values that they would like to see in a future spouse for their child. We hear over and over again from families with children of marriageable age. Your kids are ready to settle down and you don't know what you can do to help them. The conventional methods either aren't available because your personal network is just too small, either they're too pricey or simply haven't worked thus far. Newer tools such as online dating have cut the family out of the equation altogether. Wouldn't it be great if there was a trusted site that simply listed all of the eligible South Asian singles in America and easily gave you access to meet and communicate with their families while discussing potential matches with your loved ones all from one easy to use platform? Well, now there is. Introducing the Auntie Network, a collaborative matrimonial platform that allows families to transparently be part of the matchmaking process with and for their loved ones. Because we involve family in the search and matchmaking process, our target market covers both the immigrant parents who have a vested interest in their loved ones finding that matrimonial prospect, as well as their single children who oftentimes identify with having a unique third culture that they see as a common bond and wish to share with a potential partner. Both have expressed a need to work together towards the same goal of finding a suitable match to become a part of their family and their future. Indian Americans are the second largest immigrant group in the United States and one of the fastest growing demographics. As the number of Indian origin residents in the U.S. has grown to over 4 million, the community's diversity has grown as well. Today, Indian Americans are a combination of recent arrivals and long-term residents. While the majority are immigrants, a rising share are born and raised in the United States, such as myself. Many Indian immigrants have brought with them their identities rooted in ancestral homelands, while their native-born children might identify more with the American side of their hyphenated identity. The Auntie Network recognizes the unique needs of both populations and bridges those gaps in one convenient platform. Current options on the market have led to many frustrations from fake profiles to money or immigration scams to lack of transparency on who's on the other side of that chat box. All this and still sharing profiles or collaborating with family is near impossible if you are not in close proximity or not communicating with your family on a daily basis. And even if you do find a way to make all of this work, you still don't have a way of meeting and talking with the families of any potential matches which is of the utmost importance to many South Asians. Even indirect pathways, such as the informal family network, affectionately called the auntie network, and the basis of our brand name, or houses of worship or old school matchmakers, none of them offer an affordable or workable solution. The auntie network has created the first of its kind diaspora focused collaborative matchmaking platform. Verification of location and proxy profiles keep transparency at the forefront of all your interactions, reducing the number of financial or immigration scams that are prevalent on mainstream sites. You can easily share profiles with your proxies and children and approve potential connections directly from the platform. Chat with and get to know the families at any potential matches to add a further verification or family fit component to the match before connecting your children to establish further compatibility. Our greatest need is to identify and bring on board a technical co-founder to take us from beta on our web platform into a cross-functional iOS and Android app. With myself as the founder, I bring with me three plus years of direct South Asian matchmaking experience, working with our target demographic and market, which led to the founding of the Auntie Network. I have a background in corporate hospitality and account management and come from a long line of successful entrepreneurs. We've partnered with the South Asian focused Young and Hungry marketing team to come up with our go to market strategy and it is ready for execution. Launching with our already developed web platform will allow us to gather key insights on how to develop and go to market with our new mobile app. Getting investor support at this early stage will allow us to soft launch in key cities, aggregate feedback, 
and incorporate that into an app build as we penetrate into the greater US and Canadian market. We are seeking an investment of $100,000 for equity to be utilized in two primary ways. Finding a technical co-founder with experience and passion for developing mobile applications, and then taking them to market while managing the struggles that come with rapid growth upon launch. Our second is that the testing and marketing goes into finding early adopters and getting to a minimum number of users to deliver the experiences we promise and solve the needs of our target market. Projecting our user acquisition and growth over the next four years, we should be revenue generating by Q4 of this year and hit our stride of active daily users plus paid users by 2024, at which point we will be in a position to pay out reimbursements. We also see a future where the Anti network can be used in the diaspora countries, such as the UK and Australia, which will exponentially increase the size of our potential market. Thank you for your time and consideration today. We look forward to having you be part of the Anti network because after all, Anti knows best. Good job, Rada. Okay, questions? I have a question. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, Ratna. Love your business idea and beautiful, beautiful presentation. So, my, uh, my understanding of your business value proposition and how it differentiates from all the dating app is you involve the the family, either the auntie, the mom, the dad, into the dating process to help reduce the scam, right? That's so, correct. So, 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 so that, can you explain how that work would mean that the prospect talk to each other, but in the background, the mom and the dad will also talk to each other? Exactly. So chat, um, as a mom, I represent my child. And so when I'm talking to another potential representative, the parents, the representatives can talk and establish first whether or not it's even worth introducing our kids or vice versa, our children might recommend to us hey, can you go talk to this family to find out I'm interested in their son? So do the platform verify uh, if the other party is single or not uh, to help do a lot of lab work or is it something that up to them to go out and verify it, uh, themselves? And the reason I asked that question because it, there's a study that said that 30% of all the prospects on the, on the dating app either in the relationship or marriage, which is really, really scary. It is very scary, absolutely. I will say one thing about our demographic in South Asians. Um, we are very marriage focused. And so that idea of using a matrimonial platform to then go out and date casually is not as prevalent, though I do understand the concern. And security measures such as verification of profiles, location, and users, all of that is incorporated. And obviously down the line, adding in background checks and a more uh, sophisticated maybe way of verifying marital status should definitely be incorporated. Great, thank you. Great question. I've got a quick question. Um, thanks a lot for your presentation, but I'd like for you to talk more about your business model in how you're going to be generating revenue. Sure. Thanks for that question, Amaka. So it's just like a very typical dating app or web platform. It's going to be subscriber based. It's freemium model, which means it's free to get started. But if you want to access any of those search features or chat features, you would pay a monthly fee. And then obviously there's an advanced component. If you want to register more than one child and let's say you're, this happened to me in my personal experience, which is where I came from. I had an aunt, my mom's oldest sister, who signed up all of my cousins on a dating profile and managed our, you know, on on our behalf without our consent. So this is a way for us to uh, allow her to do that, but in a more transparent and, uh, you know, more acceptable way. Thank you so much. Any other questions for Rada? Feel free to drop them in the chat. You can just speak up. Awesome. Great job, Rada. Got some great comments in the chat about your energy levels and confidence as you pitch. So excellent. Excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And thank you, Stoke. And thank you, GWU as well for this amazing opportunity. Um, great. So Lossamy keeps getting dropped from the call, which is 
unfortunate because she is my, my technical counterpart. So now I'm going to just ask for um, a little patience as I figure out how to spotlight Darcia Houston, who is our next um, presenter. Darcia is the owner and CEO of Filthy Rich Nutrients. And uh, okay, oh, it happened. It happened. There you are. Great. Take it away, Darcia. Hello, everyone. You all have entered a presentation for Filthy Rich Nutrients. We create gardens. It's me, Darcia Houston, your favorite farmer, owner, and CEO of Filthy Rich Nutrients. Check us out, filthyrichnutrients.com. We manufacture organic soils, soil amendments, and create garden starter kits for those that want to start their garden in the window or they might not have a yard. The services we provide, garden planning, garden installation, soil testing, water testing, we gotta see what we're getting ourselves into. Our mission is to build sustainable gardens in the Southern sector of Dallas, Texas. And we have to do that because our target market is explaining to us what they need. All the time at farmer's markets, I'm meeting customers, but my favorite customer, let's meet her. Her name is Miss Joanne. Miss Joanne has an agriculture background, meaning she 50, 60 years ago, she remembers harvesting eggs and crops and fruit. She's a homeowner, she has a car, she's like hip and cool. She also is a grandparent raising grandchildren living in the Southern sector of Dallas. Her thing is the pandemic has happened. She wants to garden. She always knew how, but she doesn't remember or know how to start the garden or maintain. Her problem is access and convenience. She's living in the Southern sector of Dallas. There's not, many that, there's not that many stores. And when she does find a store or go to the store, soil is in high demand because people wanna grow for themselves. So her commute has been wasted when her products are not on the shelf. Currently, when we started Filthy Rich Nutrients in 2020, we couldn't access market regularly because of the pandemic. So our customers went to Family Dollar and Walmart as competition, but as you can see, poor quality and the distance is an issue for our customers. Filthy Rich Nutrients is the uniqueness. We are separated from everyone else because all you have to do is have a device, find us on social media, get on our website, learn where we are locally, and come to the market and get your product. Or just go to FilthyRichNutrients.com and actually purchase product and services, garden info, garden hacks, even newsletters. But we're extremely successful because we're creating gardens for our target market. Our target market wants collard green gardens and salsa gardens. So we wanna funnel our referrals, our social media, our farmer's market customers, and our workshop attendees to filthyrichnutrients.com. And when they arrive, we want them to immediately understand that our main goal is to have clarity and convey simplicity on how to grow garden, what to garden, when to do it. You know, So we are making sure that they are overstanding that this is for their health. They can speak with someone and converse. They can actually purchase a garden plan. They can purchase a garden installation and become an alum once they start growing, go into a garden club subscription, all the while having access and convenience to the product. Like I stated earlier, when we started market, it was 2020, Markets weren't really rolling in 2021. They started kind of late. We made $3,800 in that short period of time. So we know we can do more. The reason being is because currently we have one little small truck. I'm picking up one cubic yard, just me, one vending opportunity. We know that we need $25,000 for a bigger pickup truck and a dump trailer to help us secure bulk supplies, which will also allow us to prepare those supplies for market, create more vending opportunities, then have a marketing plan that we can execute while securing our permits and insurances that help us with those uh, vending opportunities. 
Now we can rev this thing up and provide that access for the southern sector we've been talking about. If we get that dump trailer, we can add three cubic yards, create 120 bags, three vending opportunities, pull on two employees and put some produce and plants in the back of the truck. Now we're revving up access as we want. Together with our partnerships, Dallas uh, Library has been phenomenal at allowing me to host classes virtual and in person in the communities. I'm a vendor with Dallas Independent School District working with the culinary department and gardening. So I plan to bring those on as employees and I'm the poster child for USDA soil health. So with all of these things and professional development, we want you all to support us. We need a lot of things, but definitely to create more access for the Southern sector of Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Any Let's questions for me? Thank you. Woohoo! Thank you all for the feedback. <laughs> Damn. I want to thank Stoke. I want to thank TWU. I want to thank all of the mentors in addition to my cohort because these phenomenal women like were making it happen and they were asking the questions and I was asking myself questions and I'm so excited to be here. Hi, me again, I'm Lilia. Um, I recently just took on starting my first planter box garden in our new house. So I'm super excited. I love what you're doing. Um, what would you say, like, I know you uh, mentioned like two age groups in your presentation, but what would you say like your target age group would be, or what's the youngest you would suggest this for? Um, I am able to captivate and I garden with all ages, even infants and toddlers. I can, I used to have, I had an early education background and I focused on boys or corpus callosum and the way that they think and used gardening and outdoors to make sure that, you know, the developmental could be on time. But this particular push is for a person that has control of the diet and the ability to purchase these things. And that is a retired uh, 50 through 65 year old a homeowner that can like make those decisions and cook the food, you know. <laughs> Thank you. So Dusty, hi, this hi. is Kathy. So I went to your website to kind of check it out to see if I can support you and it's feel like you sell in plant, but it's but from your presentation, it sounds like you sell so much more than that. You not only sell the plant, you also sell the soy and also the services, uh, you know, to go to the client house. Is that correct? Yes, I am a soil farmer. That's what I do for a living farm soil. I do have um, uh, garden start kits that will allow you all to, you know, purchase. Um, FilthyRichNutrients.com is the site that you should um, go to to get your soil and soil amendments. Um, I was a produce uh, farmer when I was farming commercially. So DarciaHouston.com is uh, very acclimated um, with uh, all produce and uh, healing, but definitely a soil farmer with soil uh, products. And, and also, uh, I, I was curious, so earlier you have a matrix that drank the different soy, uh, where it's come from and the quality, like, like, like I remember Walmart is poor and Dollar Star is poor and then Callaway is yeah. good. So, so can you kind of like uh, explain how did you get that ranking? Is it from the rate, the review on their website or is it like, no. like something that you actually come in and do testing or there's a third party testing for that? So there is soil testing that we do, but it's the report from the actual customers as they could not during the pandemic um, get a hold of me or I wasn't tangible. They went and purchased these products. And when I go to help them grow, um, they show me what they were, what they have and that what seeds they have. And when you look up seeds as a farmer, or one that wants to grow, you want to make sure that you have a high germination rate, usually like Johnny's or burpees or these, you know, reputable seeds and the seeds that are in 
uh, family dollar were not reputable and nor did they work for me as a professional. So that's where I'm getting the poor germination rate from because we actually did those researches uh, with different soil types and different seeds um, on a, a child level. I taught with the uh, Mark Cuban Basketball Center um, for uh, Rising Blazers through Texas, I think it's like a, a university or something. And I made sure to go through those different soils to see. And so that's where I'm coming up with poor. And then um, also their ability to gravitate towards asking questions. Um, that's also a poor uh, quality that Family Dollar would have in addition to um, Home Depot or the nurseries if you can't speak with anybody. Mm. Great, right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, one quick question that I have, exciting presentation that you have. I like the concept. Um, what would you say is your biggest challenge at this point besides um, raising money? Um, it is the ability to create more access. I'm only able to go to one, I have to choose one vending location and um, that is a, and I only have enough uh, materials to be at one location as well. So my biggest challenge is creating the access um, and manpower once I get my materials, being able to process them and get to market. It's very, very tedious, which is why I stay so fit. <laughs> awesome. Um, I wanted to also have a follow-up question on that in terms of scalability because I see that you have so much passion, so much education in this space. Um, how, how are you thinking about scaling your business once it takes off? Awesome, wonderful question. Thank you for asking that because I'm a vendor with Dallas ISD, Dallas Independent School District. And because I'm working with 11th and 12th graders, I have been successful in matriculating students to employment. And a lot of students want to stick with me, but I have no outlet to um, help them because they're in culinary and that's going to be their career. This is actually helping them with the quality of their, you know, sourcing of their uh, produce and things. So I would utilize um, an internship program, create what I've already been doing, but just ramp that up because now I'll have actual jobs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. And just a reminder that if you have questions for um, any of these women, we're going to do the breakout sessions and we're about halfway through the pitches now. So um, we've got three more pitches and then we'll do breakout rooms. So you'll be able to dive deeper um, with any of these women that you want to. Um, so up next, we have Carmen Menza, who is the owner of Menza Art Studio. Heather, you're ready. I cannot. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, you know what? Let's double check. It's going to how do I do this? Oh. Um, Lossamy, I'm not able to, I like for some reason with Carmen's video spotlighted, um, I can't, I can't figure out how to make her co-host. No um, problem. Carmen is actually unspotlighted. Okay. So you should be able to go back to gallery view. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Perfect. There we go. All right. 
I've, I wanted to first say thank you to Stoke and TWU and all of the mentors and my fellow women cohorts for your insight and support throughout this accelerator program. My business has benefited in these last five months in ways that I just could not have imagined when I started. And I thank you for the opportunity to be part of it. Thank you for coming today. I am delighted to present to you my company, my work and my vision for the future. My name is Carmen Menza, the founder of Menza Arts Studio. I am a creative technologist and artist. My company creates custom fine art and technology-based installations for residential and commercial spaces. We create beauty that moves your world. Men's Art Studio has a long history of creating art for residential and commercial spaces, working with Fortune 500 companies and some of the most respected institutions in Dallas, Fort Worth and beyond. We have created work for hospitals, hotels, the city of Dallas, art institutions and collectors, both regionally and nationally. The studio's immersive and interactive installations have been created for the Perot Museum of Nature and Science, the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, Dallas Aurora Light and Sound Festival, UT Southwestern Clements University Hospital and Alcon Laboratories. We are also honored to have a 16 year partnership with the Dallas Children's Advocacy Center by raising funds through art and supporting the work they do for abused children. How do we create the world we want to live in? We spend approximately 90% of our time indoors. So it's imperative to have an environment that encourages a sense of well-being. Menza Art Studio creates these works for you, of art for your spaces. We have 20 plus years in the retail and interior design industry, both in creating work and in project management. In addition to oil and acrylic works on canvas, we specialize in light-based work and technology-based solutions. This is a time-lapse of a work I created Oh, how do I go back? There it is. <laughs> this is a time lapse of a work I created for a residential space. The client desire, desired a spectrum of color continually animating in the space throughout the day. I created a skylight and as the sun traversed the sky throughout the day, it created these beautiful patterns of color. As Bill Gates once said, content is king. And I would add that engagement is queen. Men's Art Studio creates digital art content, creating interactive experiential works that bring people from diverse backgrounds together and foster a sense of shared community. We have 20 plus years in the broadcast TV animation industry and create works that provide undeniable engagement for audiences. A key factor in Men's Art Studio success is relationships. Our work is the result of relationships built over many years with art consultants, interior designers, luxury furniture showrooms, retail outlets, art galleries, and major institutions. I am forever grateful for their trust in me and the opportunities that they've given me to create works. My vision to achieve growth in Menza Art Studio is to concentrate on one key area and that is the scale of the works we offer. I will do this in three ways. I will introduce a new line of light-based work that is much larger in scale. I will expand my LED exterior solutions for commercial spaces. And I will create works that suspend from ceiling. These larger scaled works will allow me to capture an increased portion of commercial projects that are in the marketplace. Men's Art Studio has grown at a steady rate since our founding, and we are at a pivotal time in our growth as we find traction in the healthcare, hospitality, public art, and technology sectors. My ask is a simple one. I'm asking for $20,000 in funding to expand Men's Art Studio. I'm at a unique place in time where I have traction in both DFW region and nationally. This additional capital of $20,000 will allow me to introduce item number one, a new series of larger light-based works. I will build three prototypes, prototypes with this capital and expand my marketing within my industry sectors. 
This will result in substantial growth for Menza Art Studio, and I hope that you will be part of this journey with me. Thank you for allowing me to have your time today. I ask you to share my contact info with others. My Instagram is at Carmen Menza Art. My website is CarmenMenza.com. If you have a project or if your friends have a project that you'd like to discuss with me, please connect with me. I invite you to come see my works in person at my studio, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you about Menza Art Studio and about creating beauty that moves your world. Yay, great job, Carmen. Thank you. Hello, Lilia. Um, so beautiful work that you have, beautiful artwork. Um, me and my husband are art collectors and we just love finding new artists and getting to experience new artists. So definitely okay. really love your work. Um, but from a like structural side of things, um, as a florist, I like to hang things from ceilings. So I really love like the dimensional hanging stuff, but what would be the manpower to hang those, you know, beautiful um, pieces that you have? Like, what's that manpower look like? What does the, you know, team look like for that? Yeah, so that, that you're creating a team then. So that's at the place where um, I would be hiring people to help me with that for installation. As the artist, I would create the artwork, design it, um, create, propose it to the art consultants when they accept it. Then we would go to the process, I would go to the process of fabricating the pieces either in my studio or a lot of times I go outside of my studio. If it's, if it's like work that's in metal, I'm not a welder. So I create it in the 3D environment and then I go and get it um, uh, fabricated elsewhere. So the installation process is, you know, you're hiring you're hiring engineering firms, you know, in that case, you're going to need um, a civil engineer and um, a, a lot of other people involved in the process to help you get it in place. Thank you for the question. But there's so many large commercial spaces and um, hospitals and airports that are just available for to be able to pitch my work to. So that's what I'm hoping to move forward. In. Jackman, this is Kathy Tran. I love Hi, your Kathy. presentation. So Thank beautiful. You, so to, to understand about how we can help you with the with scale, and it seems like you work with the commercial business, big organization, right? Is that your target market? Is that a good connection for you? Or you also work with like like residential? Oh, I definitely work with residential too. Definitely. A lot of my work right now is um uh, a lot of my light-based work and my paintings are, are, are done for, well, both residential and commercial. Um, so I do both, but I'm wanting to move into a lot of, I want to expand my business by really opening up the commercial end of it where I could do much larger pieces for those large buildings. I see. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. We have time for maybe one last question for Carmen. Hi, hi, Carmen. I really love your work. Um, it's it's quite beautiful. Um, what is your strategy um, in terms of engaging with like you know commercial kind of leadership? Because um, I, I feel like that's a key part of this is you know kind of getting in front of um, you know business leaders because um, I see see them as being your you know the end users or the, the purchasers, if you will. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I have my work at UT Southwestern Hospital and really my, my point of contact is the art consultants. So the art consultants are the ones that are working with the large buildings like the hospitals and airports. And, um, and they are, they've already been awarded the project to begin with. So they're bringing in artists that are doing proposals for them and then they accept the proposals and, and hone in. They have a board of directors at the hospital at UT Southwestern. Um, um, for me to have my work in that hospital, it had to be a unanimous decision from the board of directors. And these were, these were 
people that were like on the board of the Dallas Museum of Art and the Nasher Sculpture Center. These were like important people in the city of Dallas. So, um, but the, that's my point of reference and my contact person is usually the art consultant. Awesome. Thank you. Great job, Carmen. Thank you. Okay, so now we are going to move to our next pitch. Um, Katie Novak, um, who is the co-founder of CoAP, um, is up next. Katie is under the weather today, so she's going to um, play a, a, a video that she's pre-recorded, so she's going to share that, um, and then she and her business partner, Jess Buttermer, are here to answer questions. So Katie, you should be able to share your screen and we'll get your video spotlighted. Store if I to help. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited because I get to talk about two things that I love, co-ops and co-app, an app to help startup grocery co-ops raise more money and open more stores. A co-op, short for cooperative, and also known as a community-owned grocery store, is an enterprise owned by those using its services. A community-owned grocery store is a unique kind of grocery store, one with a triple bottom line, prioritizing people and planet well before profit. In short, co-ops are grocery stores. Grocery stores that stock their shelves with local products, keeping money circulating in the local economy, and grocery stores that are better for the environment, composting and recycling significantly more than conventional grocery stores. Co-ops are different because they're owned by thousands of community members. Those thousands of owners invest millions of dollars to open these stores. Since 2007, the number of community-owned grocery stores in the United States has nearly doubled and grown from 174 co-ops in 2007 to 331 in 2022, with well over $2.4 billion in annual sales. Right now, there are 86 startup grocery co-ops organizing in the United States, and those 86 startups are using a myriad of tools and systems to track the thousands of owners and those owners investments. Sometimes they're creating their own systems. Let me tell you a quick story. When I chaired my very first cooperative capital campaign, the shared spreadsheet we were using crashed every day for 14 days. Single day, we had to re-enter data from the day before. And this time went on the day before and the day before not to mention volunteers who put the email in the phone field or accidentally deleted rows of data. It was a nightmare. I knew there had to be a better way to do this, and there wasn't until now. CoAP is the missing piece of the puzzle. It's an affordable cloud-based system designed specifically for co-ops. CoAP is the only system on the market that's built on cooperative, shared cooperative values. In addition, it's the only system that includes setup and customization, and it's the only system that tracks ownership shares and investments. Let me say that again. No other system on the market tracks ownerships or investments. That's huge. And startup community-owned grocery stores are hungry for this kind of technology. Of the 86 startups in the country, nearly a fourth of them have seen a demo of CoAP. And in our first year of operation, the three co-ops using co-op have raised $4.2 million. At the time of these demos, the three clients were positioned to begin their fundraising efforts immediately. And we anticipate that as other co-ops learn about co-op and prepare for their capital campaigns, our client list will continue to grow. In addition, our hope is to expand co-op to other sectors of the cooperative economy, like agriculture or electric co-ops. And the co-ops using co-op have great things to say. They tell us it's a godsend. That volunteers who aren't using co-op aren't as successful as those who are. Our clients love the reporting functionality and the simplicity of co-op. As the only national repository of this level of data, 
startup grocery co-ops will have access for the very first time to data-driven insights, including trends and tips and best practices. My partner, Jess Buttimer, and I have nearly 14 years experience. Prior to cooperating, I spent 15 years in corporate America and the nonprofit world and have helped co-ops raise over $9 million since 2007. My talented partner, Jess, has served her co-op board for the last six years and has extensive experience building and improving these kinds of systems in her career as a developer and user research consultant. Jess and I have built co-op with a triple bottom line in mind of people, planet, and profit. Right now, co-op costs eight to ten thousand dollars per co-op, plus a ten a plus a per user per month fee. In the spirit of the six cooperative principle, co-ops helping co-ops, our goal is to make co-op available to every co-op who would like to use it via a freemium plan where the entry level is free. To do so, we'd have to scale up the app. Preliminary research indicates that that will cost between thirty and fifty thousand dollars. To cover those costs, we're seeking grant funding. If you know of potential grants or would be willing to partner with us to apply for grants, please reach out. Today, you can help us by using the QR code on your screen to sign up to attend a demo of Co-op, follow us on Facebook, and join our mailing list. Together, we can help Co-op grocery stores raise more money and open more stores. Thank you, thank you. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to show a video. It's not my, my first choice, um, um, but also grateful to, to Stoke and TWU for the um, wonderful opportunity to participate. So Katie, I have a quick question. This is Kathy. So, so my understanding about your business model it, is it like a nonprofit? With you trying to raise a grant to to turn around and build the software and give it back to the co-op uh, to help them with fundraising and managing. Right now, the um, the business is not structured as a nonprofit. It's very early. Um, we're hoping to structure either as a worker cooperative or with cooperative principles. Um, but the grant funding would be to make the tool available uh, to co-ops who need access to it but can't afford it. Uh, you know, start every startup um, is is um, scrapped for funds, and um, that eight to ten thousand dollar entry fee can sometimes be a burden for them. So we're hoping that grant funding from an organization that supports co-ops can help make that available um, at an entry level to those co-ops. But in the long term, those uh, who can afford will pay you a monthly uh, premium, right? Correct. So that the business is sustainable, right? Yep. As, as co-ops progress and, and grow and they, and they gain more ownership and begin their fundraising, um, they would pay for a premium level of the service, correct? And what does it cost monthly for subscription? Um, the, the setup fee is eight to $10,000 and it's $100 per month um user fee plus a per user fee of ten dollars per month currently okay so i see the 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 setup fee is really really costly and that's why you need the, the grant all right Correct. thank you yeah got the yeah. monthly is not that expensive a hundred dollar right. here and there is not that terrible exactly right right it's the customization because every co-op is unique every co-op is individual and, and built for their community So Katie, there's a question in the chat. It says, what might be your vision for how the aggregated data can be leveraged to support insights on the capitalization process? I know you've thought a lot about data. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and my partner Jess is on the on the call with us too, Jess. Feel free to chime in here at any point um, as well. Sure. Yeah, um, that's a great question, Kevin. And I think uh, from our perspective, this would be the first time that we could aggregate the uh, campaign data across several co-ops. Um, right now, that's pretty difficult because they're all using um, such different systems, home homegrown in most cases. Um, but by standardizing what we collect, we can then take a look at what's happened over time with co-ops to say, what was most effective? What what sort of effort went into raising those millions of dollars? What and what what pieces made the most difference? So that we can start um, 
putting that back into cooperatives hands so they can keep getting better and better and more efficient in what they do. Our, our goal really is to make it easier for these volunteer organizations um, to achieve their objectives so that they can spend more time connecting with the people that they want to raise the money and um, from and, and gain ownership from. Awesome. Great job, Katie and Jess. I know you all work so hard on that. And Katie, um, you know, you're, you're such a trooper <laughs> to figure it out and be here, even though you're not feeling well. So, um, okay, so we're going to move on to our last pitch of, to, of the afternoon. Um, up next, we have Holly Michael, who is the founder of Secure and Known. Um, and uh, yeah, great. Holly, take it away. Right. Um, so I just want to echo thanks first and foremost to all of you guys for attending and especially to our leaders and mentors. Um, it's been an awesome opportunity and I'm excited to share this business with you guys. My name is Holly Michael and I am the founder of Secure and Known. Secure and Known is a business that is built for moms who are passionate about raising great kids. Our moms face two significant challenges. First, their children are growing up really fast. And second, our moms are very busy. And while we can't slow down how fast a child grows up, we can help moms make every moment matter. We do this by creating toys and play dates that moms can use to teach their children life skills. We tell our moms that we plan so that they can spend their time playing. The Secure and Known brand is built comprised of three key collections the Grow Collection, the Learn Collection, and the Play Collection. The Grow Collection celebrates a child's physical and developmental growth. It's true that childhood won't last forever, but your memories can. The Grow Collection product line is comprised of products that help moms capture the sweetest moments of life. The Learn Collection celebrates a child's willingness to embrace responsibility. Kids don't always think that increased responsibility is fun, but it can be. Our Learn Collection helps kids visually see their progress and encourages them to stay focused. Finally, the Play Collection celebrates a bond between a mom and a child. There is never enough time, and even the most committed moms struggle to find quality time with their kids. Our play product line gives moms an easy to follow plan for teaching their children life skills during a 15 minute play day. We tell moms that we plan so that they can play. And in fact, feedback from our moms share that that is the greatest asset that Secure and None has to offer them is that they have a plan for how they're spending their time with their children. I'm going to share with you an example of one of our play plans that is in the play collection. It's a 15 minute play date. In this plan, you can see moms will do three things. First, they'll choose a play date plan. This is comprised of a toy, as well as an educational and a value or life skills lesson that the child will learn. From there, the mom reviews the plan this includes how she might play with the toy and what verbal communication she's going to have with her child while she instills this lesson. And third, the plan includes the resources that the mom will use when playing with her child to teach the lessons that she has targeted for that play period. We see moms encouraged, memories created, and children equipped with the life skills that will lead them into their future. Our business is formally opening its doors on March 1st. We are currently looking for people to help us with three key things. First, you can scan the QR code to my right and it will take you to a page that details out each of these three things. We're looking for people to join our Facebook group. Our goal is to encourage moms on a day-by-day -day basis by engaging with them actively throughout their lives. Second, of course, you can shop our products. We'd love to have you as a customer at Secure and Known. And third, we are looking for people to share about our brand on social media. We would love for you to help us get our information out into the marketplace. 
If you have other ideas about how we can effectively launch our brand into the market, you're welcome to reach out to me personally. My contact information is included in the screen, and I'd love to chat with you. Thank you guys so much. Great job, Holly. <clears throat> Excellent work. What questions do you'll have for Holly? Yes. <laughs> I just saw in the chat the toddlers on iPads and iPhones. Um, definitely very um, important to me. Um, if you noticed, our toys are actually made from wood, um, and that's strategic because what we're really doing is focusing on the bonding relationship. There's a lot of psychology behind what we're doing, and it's very important to our brand um, to make sure that we are preparing children to be successful in their future. Hi, Holly. This is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I really love uh, the selection of toys. I did went on your website uh, to check it out. Uh, would you uh, might help me understand is where the, jo uh, the toys are manufactured? Yeah. So we are custom building toys um, in China and having them shipped to the U.S. And then we also have a partnership. Um, so we have two manufacturers in China. We have a partnership with one manufacturer um, here in the U.S. So it's kind of a combination of stuff that we custom build. Most of our learn line, um, myself and Maxine, my graphic designer, have personally made. Um, so it's stuff we personally make um, as well as stuff that we have made in um, other countries. And, and what your sale channel, is it everything's on your website or you also sell uh, on Amazon or uh, maybe all the brick and mortar store? Yeah, so we just launched on Amazon Tuesday, actually. Um, we currently only have one, uh, or one item on Amazon, but we've seen really great traction. We've actually had about 40 sales this week, which is when you launch on Amazon is unexpected to have that many so fast. So, Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. That's really exciting. I hadn't heard that. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, there's a question in the chat about the play dates. So Candace is wondering, are the play dates virtual or in person? Yeah. So the play dates are in person. Um, it is a play date between mom and child. As we expand the business, we will um, begin to offer, you know, things that you might do as children play with one another. But right now our play dates are focused on um, playing between mom and child. And it would be in person between you and your child. I've got a quick question. Um, what if a mother has um, kids different age, how would that be organized? Yeah, yeah, so what we're doing um, is there are toys, as you guys know, that span many age spectrums. And for those, we are creating lessons that can layer so you can play with all of your children, um, assuming they're within a certain age bracket simultaneously. Um, but we're also keeping our play dates really short. So our moms are primarily, um, working inside of corporate environments. And because of that, they don't have a lot of time. So we're trying to really focus on what can happen in a 15 minute interaction that creates security between the mom and the child and allows that child to continue to grow. Thanks, Brian. Oh, I see a comment on your social media. Have you considering having blogs that feature um, guest authors who might have experience in parenting like parents who've been there, done that, and success raising pre-K to college? Yes, um, thank you for that question. So definitely um, we're actually beginning an influencer um, work next week. So if you look at our social media right now, it kind of stinks, honestly. Um, that is an initiative that we are picking up right now is um, working on building our influencer relationship. Um, but also I'm very connected into um, this space. Um, I've personally parented 27 kids because, as a foster parent and adopted two. Um, and so because of that, I have 
a lot of parents um, who have gone deeply immersed into the community of you know what's available to children um, from all spectrums, psychologically, developmentally, um, addressing growth concerns, all of those things. Uh, Candace, we do not have a physical store right now, and that's not in our plans um, for the next at least year. Um, that is something we hope to do, um, hopefully in 2023. Awesome. Great job, Holly. If you have a sec while we, before we go into the breakout rooms, um, there's a request for contact information. Anybody from the cohort, if you have not yet put your website or your email address um, in the chat, please do so. Um, we could also send, since everybody registered in advance, we can um, send out an email with the contact information as well. Um, but that won't be until next week. So if y'all want it now, um, definitely um, check the chat for that. <clears throat> and then, so what happens next is we're gonna go into the breakout rooms. Like I said, you can go in and out of rooms. Um, you will be able to um, dig a little deeper, get to know these women a little bit better, congratulate them um, on really putting in so much work and coming such a long way in the last um, five months. Um, and then please join us at five o'clock right around there. We'll be at Armadillo Ale Works um, and we would love to um, have one of their delicious uh, sodas or coffees or beers um, and celebrate with you. So Lothamy, where are we at with breakouts? Are we good? Are we yeah, ready? The breakout rooms are ready. All of the um, cohort members have been assigned to them. So. Once I click this open all rooms button, um, core members, I'm sending you to your rooms and then participants um, can go to whatever room they like. Before um, we do that, that going to be, mm -hmm. sorry, before we do that, I just want to like say these women did incredible, right? Like these were great, such a diverse range of businesses and just like really, really, really excellent pitches, like great communication um, of what y'all are all doing. Um, yeah, I'm really, it's just, it's, it's, I've been, we've been hearing these, these, this, we've been seeing it evolve over the last five months. And so um, it's really just great to see, um, to see how it kind of all came together. So great job, everybody. Um, stick around, join a breakout room or two. Um, and then we hope to see you at Armadillo at five. Oh, we just had a request from Kathy. Um, if we could take a screenshot oh, of everyone together. I have I everyone separated to. into two pages, but <laughs> we can we can make it work, right? Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah. 